What's happening? Brian Tong here and my M5 MacBook Pro review is out. It's on my channel, but let's look beyond that after Bloomberg's Mark Gurman put out a report that Apple is finally caving and reportedly planning to launch a touchscreen version of its Mac. After all these years, it looks like a lot of the things they used to completely dismiss and brush off, they have now decided to do years later. Now, Gurman reports Apple is preparing a new revamped MacBook Pro with a touchscreen display for either late 2026 or early 2027. It will be an all new design that is thinner and lighter and will have the next generation line of M6 chips inside. The two new machines they are working on are codenamed K114 and K116. Touchscreen laptops have been around for over a decade and I basically gave up on the idea of Apple ever doing something like this because they refused to do it for so long. And it feels, well, you know, a little anticlimactic. Like, really Apple? Now you're going to do this? Uh, now you're going to do foldables? Now you're going to take the smart home seriously? Are we going to see an Apple smart ring in five years? Because that's how we're tracking right now, for reals. Now, German reports the new laptops will feature OLED displays for the very first time in an Apple laptop. The iPhones and iPad Pros use OLED displays currently, and the iPad Pro uses a tandem OLED display for better brightness. You'll get the deepest black levels, vivid colors, and no halo effect on these new displays, and the new OLED tech will also allow the new MacBook Pros to be thinner in size. You'll still get a trackpad and full keyboard like you expect, and you better, so you have the option to use either the touch display or the keyboard and trackpad. Now, I've always been a fan of a touchscreen laptop for surfing the web, scrolling around, going through photos, just the basic stuff, nothing crazy, maybe a little pinch and zoom, and sometimes I will still accidentally touch a screen that's not a touchscreen. I know I'm not the only one, you do it too. Now, even if you hate the idea of getting fingerprints on screen, I'm pretty sure that your screen is already pretty messy looking right now, like, ugh. Now, one of the things Apple has planned is to develop a reinforced hinge and screen hardware to prevent the display from bouncing back or moving when touched, like pretty much most PCs do. That would be a welcome improvement. The revamped MacBook Pro will also be getting rid of the big notch on top for the camera system, and it will be replaced by a hole punch design instead. The report says, it will work similarly to the dynamic island on the iPhone. Now, the new 14-inch and 16-inch M6 MacBook Pros are likely to cost a few hundred dollars more than the current models. The current 14-inch MacBook Pro starts at $1,999, and then the 16-inch starts at $2,499. Now, German says Apple is not actively developing any other touchscreen Macs, and it will wait and see how the market reacts to their touchscreen MacBook Pro. We know Apple has flirted with bringing some level of touch to a MacBook Pro with a touch bar back in 2016 that I personally did not like without any haptics. And I honestly kind of despised it because there were times where, yeah, it might have looked a little cooler, but it made functions and things to do a lot harder. You have to take an extra step sometimes. So I was not a fan of it. Apple has been resistant to potentially cannibalizing the sales of iPads for years by bringing a touchscreen to the Mac. That's why we haven't seen it for so long. But you know what Apple also wants? actual sales. They know what works when it comes to the iPad, and it will be interesting to see what type of touchscreen features they will bring to the Mac, like how extensive will they go. You've got to imagine it will be its own thing, but it's not an original idea, and it sheds light on the fact that Apple will try to bring original ideas to platforms that have existed for five to 10 years before deciding to enter them. That's a little too long for me, especially when they would talk down to them, and now all of a sudden you're coming back. It's like, okay, come on now. And I don't know if it's a lack of imagination or just putting their hands up and saying, well, we should just try this now because there's a market share that we can take if we do. It kind of feels like to me that it's being guided more by business decisions now than being guided by an innovation vision if they enter the space a whole lot earlier. And again, I've said this before, Apple is still innovative, but the bold ideas and the products we used to see just haven't happened in a long time and they just aren't as innovative anymore as they used to be. It feels like we are in the era of, hey, we're doing our own version of this after others have been doing it for five to 10 years, and it's gonna be better because you like our ecosystem and our design is better. So, you know, honestly, I am excited about a new MacBook Pro coming in the next year or so either way, but it's an upgrade that I would have probably made whether it had a touchscreen or not. So we'll see how it comes together. But look, there's more MacBook stuff to talk about, but before we do that, let's take a moment to thank the sponsor of this video, Anchor. You've got to check this out, the Anchor Prime DL7400 docking station. 
The Anchor Prime DL7400 chip supports up to three displays at once, with one display running at 8K on 60Hz and the other two displays running at up to 4K at 60Hz. This is compatible with most laptops and monitor devices on the market. Now I have it here connected with my M1 Max, MacBook Pro, and two Asus displays. And pretty much any display with an HDMI or DisplayPort connection works, even with an adapter. Now you're going to get fast charging and data transfer via the USB-C ports on here. There are three on the front and then one USB-C port on the back where I connect my laptop. If used individually without any other devices plugged into any of the USB-C ports, the back delivers up to 140 watts, so that would be for charging my laptop here. Using one of the front USB-C ports delivers up to 100 watts. The dock features a 2.26 inch high definition LCD screen that displays charging and data transfer information, screen projection information, and the temperature. There's also a desktop clock function, and you can change between different styles to choose from if you want to give it a personal look. Now this dock has active cooling built in to give you peak performance and monitors the dock's temperature 24 seven. If it starts overheating at any time, the built-in fan automatically starts up and adjusts between two modes based on temperature to efficiently cool the dock. Now if you're the type of user that knows the Anchor Prime DL7400 docking station has the versatility that you want, then this could be the perfect product for you. So check out the link in the description to find out more. Okay, let's get back to the stories, and there's been rumors about Apple making a more affordable 13-inch laptop at the entry level to compete with Chromebooks and drive MacBook purchases. According to analyst Ming-Chi Kuo, that would be a new MacBook with an A18 Pro chip, the same one found in the iPhone 16 Pro last year. Now, it would be a shift from Apple using its M-series chips in Macs, but from a cost perspective, it would be better, and we know the A18 Pro is more than enough to handle basic tasks like email, web surfing, writing documents, watching videos, and even doing a little bit of video editing. Like just for some reference, even though the A18 Pro chip is about 40% slower than the current M4 chip that is out in some products, its multi-core score performance is nearly identical to the M1 chip in a 2020 MacBook Air and even outperforms it in graphics. So why not do that, right? Use the parts in the supply chain for viable products that you can sell at a lower price point. I mean, this is what Tim Cook has been doing with the iPhone line and the iPad lineup for years. This would be a very basic entry level home user or student geared type of laptop. It makes sense with how Apple has been doing business in the past. And the A18 Pro, look, we know it does not support Thunderbolt, so it would likely just use USB-C ports, which is fine. Now, Quo reports this new entry-level laptop is expected to have an ultra-thin and lightweight design, and it could even come in silver, blue, pink, and yellow finishes similar to what we've seen from the entry-level iPad. See, it's all lining up here. Now, everything about this makes sense, and reports first claimed it would enter mass production in the last quarter of this year or early 2026. So, there's still a chance that we might see an announcement before year's end, but we won't know until it's actually official from Apple. All right, and finally... This might not be a laptop story, but I guess it kind of is. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman reports that Apple's rumored large screen foldable iPad could end up being delayed because of development issues. Apple reportedly wanted to release the product in 2028, but problems with its weight and display technology may cause it to be pushed back until 2029. I've even just loved this idea of an even larger iPad. Like, give me more screen real estate. Hey, you want to push it to 20? Okay, not 20, but 15, 16? Yeah, I like that. But multiple reports have claimed Apple is indeed working on this large foldable device. Now, we still don't know if it will be positioned as an iPad or a Mac, and maybe there's an all-new hybrid type of OS that they end up developing for this. That would make sense depending on the functionality. But this large foldable iPad is reportedly expected to have an 18-inch display that's developed by Samsung, with Apple again working to minimize or eliminate the crease in the middle of the foldable as much as possible. It sounds exactly like the rumors around their foldable iPhone. Now, we haven't seen too many large format foldable OLED displays and none from Apple. The report says when the iPad is folded, it will look like a Mac with an aluminum shell and no exterior display. And then when it's open, it will be similar in size to the 13-inch MacBook Air without a physical keyboard. Prototypes reportedly weigh around three and a half pounds, making it a lot heavier than the current iPad Pro models. Bloomberg is comparing Apple's device to the Huawei MateBook Fold, which is also an 18-inch foldable tablet that's priced at $3,400. And, you know, it's going to be more than that when Apple does it. So, just like Apple's foldable iPhone that we expect to see next year, 
we'll have to see how this new iPad unfolds. <laughs> and, and you're going to like and subscribe to this channel after that one, aren't you? All right. That's going to do it for this video. If you like what you see, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell ding, to get all my latest videos when they drop. And if you want more of that Apple goodness, you can check out my weekly Apple Bits XL audio podcast with the latest stories and special guests. Plus, you can support all my content with an ad-free version of the podcast, early access to my content, and exclusive content at patreon.com slash Brian Tong. So thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Peace and love.